I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do believe He'll come again. And I know one thing I'm gonna do till then is learn to live in the blessing of Abraham. Hello everybody and welcome to the Covenant Living Broadcast. I am David Weeder, and this gorgeous woman to my left is my wife, Lynn, and I'm so thrilled to have her on the broadcast with us the last two weeks and for this week and for next week and any other week I can talk her into coming on the broadcast. Glory to God. She, you are looking so beautiful today. Thank you. Excuse us just a minute. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you. All right. We are, come on in, come come on in, pull up a chair, grab your coffee, notebook, all that stuff. We have been talking the last two weeks about the covenant of adoption, part of being in the family of God. We talked previously a while back on the fact that we are, for lack of a better term, biological children of God through having the same DNA being born not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God. But there's a second aspect of that, particularly, particularly important when it comes to what we experience in life because it's a matter of choice. You know, you can be born to someone just as a matter of birth, but to be a part of the family on purpose is a matter of choice. And that's what we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. We're going we're gonna to go into that more today, particularly as it relates to, to heirship and inheritance and things like that. So let's start off with a word of prayer and then we'll get right into our Bible study. Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to share your word. We ask you to think through our minds, speak through our lips, the oracles and treasures of your word, the word of faith, the word of victory, the word of life. We thank you and praise you for this tremendous honor to be able to bring your word to the people all over the globe. We thank you, we praise you, we worship you. I'm asking you once again, sir, there be not one person unchanged by the power that you have towards us as believers. Glory to God. Thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, 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 amen. Okay, let's go back and start off with our golden text for the last couple weeks in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, and let's see, let's start. <laughs> We've been starting with 14. Yeah, but you know me. I keep backing up. Let's see. Okay, let's start in verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if, the, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead also quickens your mortal body, makes alive this mortal body. Glory to God by his spirit that dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, through the spirit, 
do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. That mortifying the deeds of the body is what we were talking about of resisting the devil. That's exactly, re yeah, exactly. That resisting. Yeah, where it was talking about the suffering down there in the end of verse 17 and down on into 18. Uh, we talked about what that suffering is and showed you scriptures for it last week. So go back and, and, and look at those. But that's, that's where it is right there, mortifying the deeds of the body. Resisting that temptation, you know. I want to. I want to tell you, like Brother Hagen used to say, it, you won't get the fullness out of this teaching today without knowing what came before it. And so, I encourage you to go back the last two weeks. We've been talking about this subject, and 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 watch those broadcasts so that you can get more fullness out of today's teaching. All right, let's pick it back up in uh, verse thirteen. Uh, no, let's see, where were we? Nope, 14. For as many are as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received, have, you have received, not in the future. If you're born again, you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself, beareth witness with our spirits that we are, not going to be once we get to heaven, we are the children of God. And if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Not going to be, we are joint heirs with Christ. So we started talking last week a little bit about this. What are we heirs of? Well, we saw in Galatians 3 how because we're Abraham's seed and we're in Christ, we're, we're heirs, heirs to the blessing. The Bible talks about us being heirs of salvation. But a lot of people fall short on that word salvation. Salvation. Because they fail to translate <laughs> and meditate. We've talked about that before if you've watched our broadcast. That word salvation means protection. It means deliverance. It means healing. It means the rebirth of the new spirit, of the, of the human spirit. And it means prosperity, to do well. That's what we're heirs of, which is what the blessing talks about. We're heirs of the blessing. Last week, we saw what the blessing did in Abraham's life because it talks about we are heirs of the blessing of Abraham. So we saw the effect that that had made him very rich in, in cattle and in silver and in gold. Any way you cut it, that's money. <laughs> you got it? Very rich. He had so much stuff, the land couldn't support him and Lot at the same time. That's a bunch of stuff, my brother and sister. Heirs of the blessing. So let's dig into that a little bit deeper today. Let me open up my notebook here. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. Because we, now don't, don't get sidetracked. We're still talking about adoption. That's what this is talking about. If you're adopted, if your heart cries, Abba, Father, then your heirs, joint heirs with Christ. And that's what we're talking about, the covenant of adoption. Because that's, you, can't, you can't separate adoption and covenant. That's what adoption is, is a covenant. So let's look at, at uh, that heirship and that, and that covenant of blessing in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. And I want to read it in the New Living Translation. Remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. All right, so your ancestors, your family, you're in the family. So this is what we're talking about. Well, and that's where in Galatians 3, mm -hmm. we're saying Abraham is our ancestor. Now. Exactly. And so he gives, a, anytime there's a covenant made, Gifts are exchanged. And one of the things he gave us is the power to be successful. The power to prosper. 
one aspect of our covenant of adoption is inheriting the family financial wealth. One aspect. Now, there's other aspects, but today we're talking about heirship. We're talking about inheritance. I want to talk about financial wealth of the family. The, the, um, the prodigal son, the father put the signet ring on his hand, the robe on his back. Those were symbols of the family's wealth. He could get anything that family had with that signet ring. Yeah, anymore that would be like the dad walking out and saying, here's your card. Here's my platinum right. American Express. You know, get whatever you need to get, whatever you want to get. It's yours. He said later down in that scripture, he said in that passage, he said, all that I have is thine. Glory to God. That's, that is the God that created the universe, the almighty God says, all that I have is yours. It belongs to you as an inheritance. Glory to God. Now, Psalm 89, 34 says just exactly how seriously he takes your covenant of adoption. You got it there, you want me to look it up? You want to Psalm 89, 34 says, I will not break or alter my covenant. Glory to God. Let me, let me reiterate, this is almighty God. And he says, I will not break. And in the New Living Testament, the next part of that verse is, I will not take back a single word I said. <laughs> Glory to God. Brother, when you've been adopted by the Almighty God, you've you been, you've you done been adopted. <laughs> there is no, there's no unadopting. Well, and something that people don't get is if there's a child in the family that's been adopted, they've been there for a while, they should have started figuring these things out. They know what their rights are. They know what mm -hmm. their privileges are. Then when somebody new comes in the family, we're supposed to be introducing them to these things, not teaching oh, them good, how yeah. hard God is. Mm -hmm. A great example of that is our daughter freely <laughs> requests my card so she can go get lunch someplace. Mm -hmm. You know, it might be something simple like a burger or chicken sandwich or something. And the other day, we got a message, and we do have somebody new in our family. And she asked on his behalf. She said, hey, he wants a chicken sandwich. Can I use your card to go get it? And at first, he was upset. He's <laughs> he like, like, don't he throw threw me, me under, under the bus. bus. <laughs> but she was teaching him, my heart is, yeah, I'd like to bless you with lunch. She knew that would be my heart but she was also introducing him on how to requisition it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I'll give you a little hint too. If, if mom's a little bit on the fence <laughs> about whether we're going to do something or not, next thing I hear is daddy <laughs> <laughs> and El Shaddad shows up. <laughs> oh, it's a wonderful way to live. Glory to God. Now back to, I want to, I want to address something just real quick in Deuteronomy 8:18 where it talks about he'll give you power to be successful or in the King James power to get wealth. A lot of people try to pass that off as, well, you know, be successful. That means, you know, you're happy, you're joyful and all that stuff. Well, lest there be any mistake, uh, like we pointed out with Abraham last week, if you just back up to verse 10, it actually says in the Amplified Classic, when you have eaten and are full, so it's talking about things, you shall bless the Lord your God for all the good land which he's given you. Now we're into real estate. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his precepts, and his statutes, which I command you this day, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built goodly houses and live in them. That goes right there with the New Testament where it talks about he shall receive now in this time a hundredfold houses and lands. He's, God is not stingy. He's not cheap. 
have built goodly houses and live in them. And when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold. gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied. That, my brother and sister, is wealth, is success and the power to get it. Now, if you're in the King James Version, where it talks about the power to get wealth, it will actually have a cross-reference there that takes you to Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22. And we're talking about covenant and we're talking about blessing. And this is actually the cross-reference that it takes you to. Proverbs 10, 22, what is that power to get wealth? The blessing of the Lord. It makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord, our inheritance is the power to get wealth. Glory to and God. And the thing with that is so many people think that you can either be happy or you can have money because the weight of the money and what to do with it and things like that can in the natural bring on worry. Mm -hmm. How do you juggle this? What do you do here? What do you do there? But when it comes through the blessing and him guiding you and him directing, then there's no sorrow with it. Mm -hmm. And that's actually got a, a double meaning in that verse because that word sorrow, it means sorrow. But if you look back in the no original toil. Hebrew, it means no toil. toil. The Amplified Classic actually says the blessing of the Lord, it makes truly rich and he has no sorrow with it, neither does toiling unjust labor, basically, increase it. You don't have to work like a dog. Now, you have to work. The Bible tells you you don't work, you don't eat. But you're not working trying to make a living. The blessing makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. Well, that even goes with family. There are some families that are like, well, I don't think you worked hard enough to get this. Yeah, it's within my capability of giving it to you, but I just think you've been too lazy today. Where, again, it's not that you're not doing anything, but you don't have that constant hanging over your head of, I've got to work harder, I've got to be better, I've got to, that push, when it becomes a push mm -hmm. and a stress, that's no longer in faith. It's a place of rest. You know, the faith rests. I'll enter into the rest. Now, this blessing as our inheritance, join heirs with Christ mm -hmm. because of our adoptive covenant. We talked quite a bit previously about adoption as a choice. Now, God's already chosen you. Mm. Before the foundations of the world. Before the foundations of the world. You hang on till next week. <laughs> we got something for you. But he's chosen you. Now, the, the question is, are you going to choose his covenant? The prodigal son didn't at first. Right. He chose another covenant, found out he made the wrong choice, and rechose <laughs> the correct covenant. Well, he did Deuteronomy chapter 30, in verse 19, I call, this is God Almighty talking, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life, death, blessing, cursing. Therefore, you choose life that both you and your seed may live that thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is your life and the length of your days that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, to your adopted family, your heirs of Abraham. Glory to well, God. And right before that in Deuteronomy 28 and 29, he goes through what's the blessing What's the curse? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so they weren't having to make an uninformed decision and exactly what all was included on the <laughs> blessing side and the curse. I mean, he does shortcut it there, life and death. And we could take a long <laughs> time, which we don't have, 
going verse by verse, which you need to do. That's, the, that's your homework assignment <laughs> before next week because we're going to go get that thing. We got that special thing planned for you. But your homework assignment is to go to Deuteronomy 28 and read all of the blessings. Blessings of health are there. Blessings of finances are blessings there. Blessings of being able to carry a child. Mm -hmm. Blessings of protection. All the blessings. You know, the, 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 the curse was basically threefold. Spiritual death sickness and disease, and poverty. We're redeemed from the curse of the law, which is why don't just read the blessing part of Deuteronomy 28. Go through the curse. It's ugly. It's terrible. There's all kinds of nasty things in there. But and if every, you spot something in that side, you can go, wait, that's, that's not, not mine. mine. <laughs> that does not belong to me. And you get right down there to verse 61, and it says every sickness and every disease not even named in this book is under the curse of the law. COVID-19 is under the curse. They didn't even know about it until last year, but it's already under the curse. And anything else that ever comes up in the future is under the curse because every sickness, every disease not listed in that book is under the curse and it's not yours. It does not belong to you. The blessing of the Lord is what belongs to us. Glory to God. But how do we choose the blessing? He told us in Deuteronomy 30, here it is, life, death, blessing, cursing, choose. But how do you make the choice? I'm so glad you asked that. Go on over to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs 18. You know, there's a lot of good stuff in Proverbs, and my recommendation would be to read one every day. There's 31 chapters, 31 days in a most, you know, mm. you know read months. Read an extra one here. Read an extra one here and there. It fits pretty well. Just read one every day, bless God. All right. Proverbs uh, 18, verse... 20. No, I want to... Back up. Uh, okay, all right, fine. We'll start with 20. <laughs> a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. That's what provides the food he was talking about in, in Deuteronomy. The, f the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life, remember, Life, death, blessing, cursing. Death and life, blessing and cursing, are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it, either way, shall eat the fruit thereof. You find somebody that just loves to curse all the time. In Texas, we just call it cussing. And it, it's frustrating because you sometimes because you try to explain to them a better way and they can't figure out why their life is rough and tough and they're always struggling and things like that. But they're, they're declaring cursing over their lives all the time. They can't prosper and be successful to the anywhere near the extent, the extent that, they, that could. they could. And they're always toiling, trying to produce the effects that the blessing is supposed to produce for them. And this is the key to the situation. They that love it will eat the fruit thereof. Either way. Now, I've only got a couple minutes left, but I want to show you a real gem in this process and go back to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1 is where we looked last week and we saw that Jesus was heir of all things. But if you go on down, and you can go ahead and look up Psalm 103. We're going there next. Hebrews chapter 1, go all the way to the end of the chapter, and you will see, we'll just for sake of time start in 13, verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for not two, for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Talking about our inheritance again. Our inheritance has angels, all of them sent forth the minister for us. Go to Psalm 103. Verse 20. 
Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Listen very carefully. I'm going to give you a gem here. The word hearken. Go ahead. Don't take my word for it. Look it up in, uh, in Strong's Concordance or, or whatever. That word means to hear, yes, but it also means to obey. The angels hear and obey, but notice it does not say the word of the Lord. It says they hear and obey the voice of of the word. It's a spoken word. It's a spoken word. You've got to put the word of God in your mouth and whatever's coming out of your mouth, life and death or blessing or cursing, licenses your angels to work in your behalf if it's the word of God. If it's the word of cursing, it's the word of the devil and it licenses his angels to go bring the curse into manifestation in your life. And believe me, we got enough of that around us. We don't need to be aiding and abetting death and cursing. Put the word of God in your life. It is, it is covenant. You don't fast and pray to into a, enter into a covenant. You just enter into a covenant. And he will back it 100% of the time. Covenant is covenant. And it is the word of God. He won't alter it and he won't change it. Put the word in your mouth and put your angels to work. Glory to God. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm going to let the Apostle Paul do my speaking for me here for a moment in Philippians chapter 1. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy for your fellowship or your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Thank you, partners, for getting in here and helping us get this job done. You know, in, in, the, in the Gospels, it says Peter beckoned to his partners because there were so many fish. Thank you for helping us get this word out. And I invite you right now, if you're not already a partner with David Weeder Ministries, Seek the Lord, inquire of Him, and find out if you're supposed to be. And if you are, go to our website, davidweeder.org, click on partnership, and sign up. Get in here with us. I guarantee you, you'll be prayed for every day. That's first. Did you hear, Paul? That's first. You'll be prayed for every day. You'll get a partner letter every month. We love you. We want to be a blessing to your lives. And don't forget this very important thing. Lynn and I love you so much. God loves you. He's for you. And Jesus is Lord. Thank you partners and friends for helping make these broadcasts possible. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and you can also listen to our broadcasts on iTunes. Contact us at davidweeder.org or call us at one 800 988-5380 to send praise reports, request prayer, or for more information about our ministry and how to become a partner.